if I ever fucking want to cut my hair into a pixie cut again, everybody send me back in time to these vlogs and just remind me how much I have to do to get my hair to look decent in videos. I have spoken. Hello everyone, my name is Monica and welcome back to my channel Mooney Reads where I talk about books and things. And today I have a tag for you. Now, before anybody goes on about tags being filler content, I just want you to know that number one, tags are just as hard as film as any other video. And number two, tags really give us like an insight of a lot of things that we might not normally get from booktubers. So I just really think we should appreciate tags more. So here's this tag that I was not tagged in, but I don't care because that's the, game, the name of the game in this like channel. We don't care. So <laughs> this is called the spooky scary book tag. And seeing as we are so close to Halloween, I thought the spooky scary book tag was the perfect tag to do at this time. So let's get into the questions, shall we? I saw this video from Ramsey over at Rajathon. My cat is going to destroy my Halloween decorations, but you know what? Is it a Monica video without her cats destroying everything? I don't think so. So let's just ignore her. She's, she's eating it. She's going to puke it up and then I'm going to have to clean it. That's the real spooky, scary story of this video. Number one, what is a scary book that reminds you of 2020? Oh, okay. I have it right here with this little spider that you can't see, but I have it right here. And that is Severance by Ling Ma. I mean, there is a, well, in this case, it's not a virus, it's a fungal infection, but it's treated like an infection anyway, that starts in China and that it's poorly treated by the government. And I telling you, my cats just hate me. It's poorly treated by the government and, and it ends up just coming well going to America and it's a book about that and I think that um, the similarities between this and real life were a little bit intense but of course the the virus itself or the infection is not the same but I feel the isolation factor of being isolated into your homes and everything like that I think that that really rings true to home and I mean this book is amazing and I 100% recommend that you read it. Of course, like I said, this is fiction, you know, it's 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 a little bit zombie-esque. So as much as it does remind me of real life, it's not like, you know, we're not going through a zombie apocalypse, not that I know of. If you if you know, please let me know so that I can like buy some provisions because right now in my house we've got like apples and soy milk. I'm really excited to see what other books people picked for this question because I love post-apocalyptic or you know that kind of stuff and let's face it this is what we've got now this is this is our lives now <laughs> and I think a lot of people are going to associate 2020 with a lot of like pandemic books for obvious reasons so um, yeah, I'm excited to see what you guys have said. So question number two is, what is a new scary spooky novel you want to read in 2021? Oh, one that I want to read in 21, 2021. You know, I haven't really given this much thought because like I said, I've just recently got gotten, is it gotten? Into <laughs> new, um, in, not into new releases, well into new releases, but definitely I've just recently got, gotten back into reading horror because for a long time it was just sci-fi and not horror. So I don't know if I have one. I really want to read The Stand and I was going to read it this year. But the thing about The Stand is that it's 1,400 pages. Like, I can't. Like, ugh, I fucking hate long books. But... I've heard it's good, but here's the thing. I keep hearing like it's good and then I hear it's bad and I just don't know which one it is. And if I'm going to commit to 1,400 pages, that book better be good. So I'm, I'm guessing that's it. But as far as a new release, um, anything by Stephen Graham Jones. And I'm really getting into books, um, horror novels written by Native Americans or First Nations people. And I just really want to get into that genre more because 
I think that it, it's so well done, so well written. And um, I read a quote. Oh, if I find the article where I read this quote from, I will link it down below. But it was about a Native American, I believe, woman who was talking about why uh, post-apocalyptic horror is so good for Native American, like Native Americans write it so well. And they say, we have already survived an apocalypse. We're really good when it comes to talking about it. So I just thought that quote was incredible. So I think anything written by a uh, Native American or a um, First Nations people, anything like that, I'm really looking forward to that. Question number three is, who's an author you are afraid of reading? I don't think there's an author that I'm afraid of reading. I mean, do I? No. I guess the closest we could get is Brandon Sanderson, but I've already read Brandon Sanderson, but I've read his sci-fi stuff and I'm scared of reading his fantasy stuff because everybody and their mother loves it and I guess I'm afraid that I'm not going to love it. Uh, but I'm not afraid of reading any any author, really. I, I just think that at this point, like, I, <laughs> like, what author would I be scared to read? Um, I, I used to be scared of reading Jane Austen simply because I was pretty sure that I wasn't going to like her books and spoiler alert, I really don't. Um, but I don't think there's a, um, oh, maybe Karen Slaughter. I think Karen Slaughter is an author that I'm scared to read because I've heard her books are really good, but they're really like, like she doesn't shy away from, uh, not, yeah, body horror, I guess. And, oh, who wrote The Troop? The man that wrote The Troop. Nick Cutter. Nick Cutter, I feel, is another author that I might be kind of, not scared to, but hesitant to read because he seems to be very well loved within the horror community. And what if I don't like it, you know? But I'm not really scared of that. I think this goes back to that whole, I'm not an author woman I am more a story woman, so like, I'm not scared to read anybody else's work. I'm just, you know, I, I, I'm not somebody that focuses on the author. I focus more on the story, so I guess that's it. Sometimes I do get scared about reading authors because I don't know how problematic they are because, <laughs> boy, have we had a year for problematic authors. So I guess sometimes I, I'm scared that I'm going to read a book and I'm going to be like, I'm going to gush over this book. I love it. And everybody's like, Monica, that person is a turf or, or a child molester or something. I don't know, you know? So in that, that, that would be the scared that I, um, that I get. But other than that, I'm not scared of no author. Number four, of all the things you have lost, what do you miss the most? Wow, that got real for a second there, because I guess I would have to say my uncle. That's what I miss the most, really. I mean, I'm sorry. I'm sorry if this got really real for a sec, but I was going to say something like, I miss going to the library and everything, but that's all going to come back, and my uncle is not, so I guess I have to say my uncle. Um, yeah, that's the thing that I miss the most. And number five, how are you going to forge ahead in 2021? Listen. I have gone through the ringer this year to the point that I've reached this state of nirvana where it's like, where it's like, zombie apocalypse, well good baby, we're fine, like <laughs> nuclear warfare, we'll find a way to survive. Like I just, I think my mentality going forward is, um, I've just reached the point where I'm just like, look, shit sucks, suck it up baby, you know? I'm going to keep trying to be positive. I'm going to keep trying to live my life as if nothing had changed, even though everything has changed. Um, but that's pretty much it. Like, I don't, I don't have a plan. That's the thing. I don't have a plan. My plan is keep going to work, keep making videos, keep reading, keep living every day as if this is... Possibly my last day. I know that sounds really intense. It's not as intense as it is, as it sounds. It's just that I just want to keep living my life in a way that um, 
I am proud to live it and I just have no expectations because I remember when the confinement started we were all like oh yeah this is gonna last like two months oh when the summer comes the virus will just lose its grip on humanity and then like every time it was just like oh when the next thing comes when the next thing comes so I guess what I'm saying is I have no expectations except to keep trudging along and keep being as happy as humanly possible and also being kind to myself you know because at the end of the day this situation we're in sucks so if I can just be a little bit kind to myself and give myself some grace like during it then yeah I guess that's 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 what we're gonna do my cat's in the litter box I don't know if you can hear her through my new microphone. I don't know if you can hear the fact that my cat's in the litter box through my new microphone. Uh, I guess I'm going to leave it in there just to see if you can hear her. But anyway, um, Ramsey did mention in his video, I don't know in which question it was, that he was feeling a bit bloated. <laughs> and trust me when I say, none of my jeans fit. Like, if it doesn't have an elastic waist, it doesn't fit. So I'm also feeling a little bit bloated. And I was giving myself such a hard time about that. And then I thought about it and I was like, girl, there are people dying out there and you're really worried about the fact that you gained some weight because you're not doing anything except teaching online. Gosh, my cat's really going at it at that litter box, isn't she? I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I know that it got real intense for a moment. But I promise you that I'm fine. I promise you that I'm okay. And <laughs> except for my cat, I don't know what the fuck is wrong with her. <laughs> but anyway, um, thank you so much for watching. I just want to remind you that I appreciate each and every one of you. If this was your first video here, gosh, that was intense for you. I'm sorry. But yeah, without any further ado, I bid you adieu with a friendly reminder that I post every Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays. And that I will see you in another galaxy far, far away from my cat's litter box.